when I was young, I was so fascinated by light that I used to stare directly at the sun. Now, for the kids out there, this is a really bad idea. <laughs> Again, kids, grown-ups do not do this. I used to stare at the sun, wondering, if this is just light, why is it so hard to look at? And so I wish I'd known that sunlight contains not just visible light that we can see, but also ultraviolet light that burns your eyeballs. <laughs> Another thing I wish I'd known, what I was staring at was not the sun, but the sun as it had been eight minutes beforehand. Now, the reason for this is that light travels fast, but not infinitely fast. That has to go all the way from the sun to the Earth, and that's a long distance. So it takes light eight minutes to do that. Technically, the sun could have exploded seven minutes ago, and we wouldn't know for another minute. Technically. So now, as a professor of astrophysics, I'm still fascinated by light but perhaps even more so by its absence. I study the environments of black holes. Now, what are black holes? I'm going to explain. <laughs> you can't jump off the Earth. If you try, you get pulled back down. To launch yourself off the surface of the planet, you need to be traveling at a really fast speed. The speed is called the escape speed. Now, for Earth, the escape speed is about 11 kilometers per second, or seven miles per second. For the moon, because it's smaller and has a lower gravity, it's about two kilometers per second. For the sun, on the other hand, if you were standing on the surface of the sun, you'd have other problems. But if you wanted to escape, you'd have to travel faster than 600 kilometers every second. Every astronomical body in the universe has an escape speed. A black hole is simply a body that has an escape speed that's faster than the speed of light. So if light tries to jump off its surface, it gets pulled back down. And so if we look towards a black hole, we can't see any light from it. Black holes are black. So how do you make a black hole? Well, in theory, it's quite simple. You can take anything in the universe, like a star, or a planet, or a cat, and if you cram it down to a small enough space, you can make a black hole. <laughs> yes. The catch is, it has to be a really small space. So for an example, to turn the Earth into a black hole, you need to crush it to the size of your thumbnail. So what in nature can do that? What can take something massive and cram it into a really small space? Gravity can do this. And gravity does this all the time to stars. See, stars spend their lives struggling between two forces. The first is gravity. The weight of the star itself wants to cram the star smaller and smaller. But the opposing force comes from the heat that's generated in the interior of the star that wants to push the star outwards. And so a star remains in balance very happily until the end of its life when it runs out of fuel to produce the heat. And so then gravity can begin to win and compress the star smaller and smaller. Now, if the star is massive enough, there is no force in nature that can combat gravity and the star will be crushed all the way to a black hole. Black holes are the remnants of dead stars, and they're everywhere. They're in the night sky. You just can't see them. So this is something I really like about astrophysics, the different perspective it gives you. We're really lucky to be here on Earth. Things could be so much worse. The sun is a star, and I've just told you that gravity crushes stars into black holes all the time. How much worse would things be if the sun were a black hole? 
So let's actually walk through this thought experiment. And I'm going to simplify it as much as possible. What if we just woke up tomorrow morning and the sun had collapsed to a black hole? What would happen? So the first thing is, it wouldn't be morning. We'd be locked in a permanent night without any more sunrises. But this is not what our night sky would look like. We wouldn't be able to see the moon anymore. And that's because the light we see coming from the moon right now is sunlight reflected off its surface. Now, with the sunlight gone, we'd also lose our main source of heat. The Earth would get so cold so quickly that the atmosphere would freeze and fall to the ground like snow. In technical terms, the Earth would turn into a giant snowball. <laughs> now, I hate to do this to you. <laughs> None of these animals would survive. There is one animal, however, that would do just fine. And it's not the cockroach. It's the tardigrade. So tardigrades, for those who don't know, are these tiny microscopic animals about the size of a pinhead. And they're incredible. They have these cute nicknames like water bears and moss piglets. <laughs> but they are among the most resilient known animals. They can survive extreme temperatures and pressures, even the vacuum of space. We know that because we've done that to them. <laughs> Tardigrades have been trooping around since before the dinosaurs. And I would bet that they'll still be here long after we're gone. So what about we? What about human animals in a black hole sun? Well, now for some good news. If the sun turned into a black hole, we'd still get birthday presents every year. My group here in Boulder studies the motions of bodies in orbits around black holes, and we can assure you the Earth would remain on the same path as always. It's a misconception that black holes just suck everything into them. Unless you're very close to a black hole, its gravity will behave in the same way as around any other object. But the bad news. We wouldn't be able to live on the surface of the Earth anymore. It would be way too cold, and with atmosphere frozen onto the ground, we wouldn't be up to breathe. The human race would likely need to live under the sea, in submarines. Now, the sea, the oceans, will develop a very thick layer of ice, but underneath will have lots of liquid water where we can live with the tardigrades. <laughs> we'll be fine. And now, for the really good news. Our star, the sun, is never going to turn into a black hole. It's simply not massive enough. And by that, I mean it doesn't have enough material for its gravity to ever be strong enough to crush it small enough to make it into a black hole. But what I'm hoping is that by this thought experiment, you now feel really good about your everyday problems. When you feel down, I invite you to think about the planets that are in orbit around dead stars or black holes. And be really grateful for the sunrises and the sunsets and the sunrises that we get. For me, this thought experiment goes just one step further. Knowing that we could survive on a cold, dark world underneath a thick layer of ice, I wonder, is there anywhere in our solar system that looks like this today and could support life? And the answer is yes. Europa is a moon of Jupiter's, and it's a water world just like Earth. But because Jupiter is so much further away from the sun than Earth is, it's very cold and very dark on Europa. And so Europa right now looks a bit like what Earth would look like if Earth were orbiting a black hole. It's got this thick layer of ocean ice, but underneath a liquid water ocean. Actually, Europa, though it's smaller than Earth, has more water than Earth. And so, in four years, NASA is going to be launching Europa Clipper. 
This is an unmanned and unwomaned expedition <laughs> to Europa to study its habitability and to also find the best place to land. Because we, in future, plan to drill through that icy surface to reach the liquid water ocean underneath. So this is pretty exciting. And I'm not saying we're definitely going to find aliens under the surface living in submarines. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really exciting that we're going to look. And if we do find life in Europa, just think, what does that mean for life elsewhere in the galaxy? Life around black holes, for example. Sunlight is hugely important to life here on Earth. Because we've evolved in tandem with it, it doesn't have to be for life in other worlds. There's a non-zero chance that Europa has evolved life. And it's probable that that life has developed eyes that are much more sensitive to the dim sunlight out there. And so I like to imagine that right now, there's a young European life form looking up at the sky, perhaps even staring at that very, very distant sun and wondering, why is this so hard to look at? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>